What I'd like to do in this video is talk about why you may not want to move permanently to Southeast Asia. So let's go through it. Hi folks, this is Javier. You're watching Retire, Recharge in Rome. Welcome to the channel. If you're returning, welcome back. If you know a little bit about our story, my wife and I moved from the U.S. to Southeast Asia about a year ago, and we've been vlogging our daily life and adventures traveling around Laos and the rest of Southeast Asia. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about six reasons why you may not want to move permanently to Southeast Asia. So let's go through it. Number one, the heat. If you're not a big fan of the heat, you may want to think twice about moving permanently to Southeast Asia. In the hot season, it can be well over 40 degrees C, so over 100 degrees Fahrenheit with 95 to 100% humidity, so that can be pretty uncomfortable. Seasons typically range from March through June is typically the dry season, July through October is typically the rainy season, and then November through February is the cooler part of the year. So think twice if you're not a big fan of the heat. Number two is the burning season. So this goes along with the hot season, but during the driest time of the year, which is March through May, uh, the farmers typically will burn off their older crops to get ready for the new season. And so this is predominantly through the areas of Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand. And during this time of the year, the, the air can be really unhealthy. There's what's called the PM 2.5. So small particles can make it hard to breathe and really add to the overall heat of the season. It can get pretty uncomfortable. So that could be another reason why you may want to think twice about moving permanently to this part of the world, or at least have a plan on what you're going to do during that time of the year. Third one is the critters. So if you're not familiar, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures that live here that you may not experience from your home country. Things like cockroaches that are the size of your fist. Uh, of course, there's snakes, spiders, geckos are one that people don't really anticipate, but they're a kind of lizard that are really predominant both outdoors and most indoors. There's not much you can do about them, so you just have to live with them. And other strange creatures. I've got some stories about uh, coming across a cobra in our farm, which was kind of a scary experience. Also, one day in the bathroom at the farm, came across a gecko that was the size of my arm. So that was a wake up uh, early in the morning. So. If you live here long enough, you'll have those kind of experiences. So just one thing to keep in mind if you're not comfortable around creatures and critters. Another aspect is the slower pace of life, which is pretty pervasive. It's a part of the culture here. It's great if you're here on short term, such as vacation. It really helps you kick into that vacation mode pretty quickly. If you're here longer term though, then it can bring up some frustrations and just wait in or understanding the way that things work and operate here. The slower pace just means that it can take longer for things to happen. Even things as simple as going to a restaurant and ordering food, getting your server's attention, trying to arrange for repairs for your home or automobile can take longer than you would be used to in terms of coming from the West. So it's just something to keep in mind. Where it doesn't seem to be an issue is in terms of medical services. Medical or health services actually happen pretty quickly from my experience compared to the West. So that is one good thing. Next one on my list is employment or income. So if you're coming here permanently, some people from the West may assume that it would be easy to find a job in Southeast Asia. A lot of people look for teaching positions, which there are plenty of opportunities. It just depends on the salary and the type of job that you're looking for. Other types of employment opportunities can be pretty limited and very technically specialized. 
So just keep that in mind if you're expecting to come over and find uh, a place of employment. If you're coming for retirement purposes, then it's great. Just make sure that you've got your sources of income well established. I'd always recommend that you've got a good amount of savings uh, established once you move over to Asia. Another strategy that people take if possible is doing remote work. So if you can leverage a job from your home country where you're working remotely and then living in a part of the world that's a lower cost to live in, then you can do that geo arbitrage and uh, make that work to your benefit. Just another thing to keep in mind. And finally, there's something that a lot of people don't really think about and that's missing your friends and family from your home country. That can weigh pretty heavily on some people. So before you make a decision to move permanently to Southeast Asia, make sure that you've got a good understanding of what being that far away really means. I'd recommend, if possible, come over for a month or three months for an extended period of time before you make any permanent plans and to see what that is like. All right, so those were my six things to consider why you may not want to move permanently to Southeast Asia. If you are considering it, it's a great part of the world, amazing people and culture. We're currently in uh, the south part of Laos uh, in Atapu, which is a pretty amazing place. It's got kind of a frontier feel. And these are the kind of experiences that you just, you wouldn't have unless you take the opportunity to travel and see the world. We've decided to make this a permanent part of our life at this point in our lives. And we're enjoying every bit of it. So I would highly recommend it, provided that you consider these aspects. All right, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next video.